joined by Laura Shifter. She's a senior fellow at the Aspen Institute and joins us from Baltimore, Maryland. Thanks so much for being here with us. Um, so in, in the wake of those two hurricanes, as I said, many schools had to close. Tens of thousands of students are still out of their schools, and some of those schools uh, we know won't reopen for the rest of the school year, and students will have to find alternatives. Uh, these massive weather events seem to have a, a, a growing effect on learning. Yes, absolutely, Kim. Um, the What we are seeing right now is our changing climate is impacting children, young people, their families, and their schools all across the country. Um, lost learning is something that we're very acutely aware of its impact since COVID, and we are seeing climate change having these de devastating effects for students as well. Um, the yeah. loss in North Carolina and Florida in particular, we don't know how many days yet students will be out from school and need to catch up on their learning. Yeah, and, and I mean, in echoes of, of uh, the pandemic, I mean, we saw that uh, all of these problems, uh, they tend to get accentuated in, in communities that are uh, communities of color and, and lower income, right? Absolutely. And, you know, even just heat, which is one thing that we're seeing increasingly across the country, has a disproportionate impact on Black and Latino students, um, largely because they're going to schools with worse infrastructure and they're not able to keep things cool. And it's really hard to learn and teach when the building itself is hot. And we're seeing that impact have a um, direct result on learning. And the EPA has actually projected that that will impact future um, economic potential for these students as well down the road. Yeah, huge long term impact and, and not just uh, with their learning and, and, you know, their economic future. There's also the, the mental health effects as well. When students, you know, lose their homes, they, they potentially losing family members, that sense of being unmoored, uh, the loss of routine can be really devastating at that age. Again, as we learned during the pandemic. Absolutely. I mean, students have been exposed to trauma. They've faced disruption and upheaval. And our school systems really need to be considering how they're providing mental health support for students, both um, in recognition that these events are happening more frequently and thinking about how we can prepare students to be more resilient. And then in the immediate impact after some of these larger events are happening, um, you know, ensuring that we have counselors in place that can help provide that mental health support that students need to process, um, re-engage in school and re-engage in learning effectively. Yeah, I wanna pick up on that re-engage in school because uh, we've seen in these types of things uh, when when kids um, have to, to move and relocate, uh, sometimes they tend to drop out, get lost by the system and, and, and never get back in. Right, and it's really devastating. I think school districts across the country really need to be starting to think more about how to better uh, prepare for and support students in a changing climate. And that might also mean how to um, enroll students rapidly if another community faces impacts. How can we kind of continue to reach out and support students and think more holistically about um, you know, where students can go in the wake of a hurricane or in the wake of a wildfire and ensure that they have their needs met. Mm. All right. So in terms of solutions, you, you've offered some of them there in terms of the maybe more soft factors in, in terms of the actual schools themselves. I mean, these are the, the pillars of the community. Is there any more that can be done to make them uh, more able to withstand the effects of climate change and, and extreme weather? So I do think we need to do some assessments on how schools are going to face the likely climate risks and then consider the infrastructure that's there. I mean, you can think about when we're building new schools, it's actually really important for us to project out and make sure that we're not building schools in flood prone areas, for instance. Um, there's also a lot of ways that we can think about school infrastructure to reduce heat. I know you spoke about heat islands at the beginning. Um, thinking about ways to remove that heat trapping asphalt that many schools have around their building and actually replacing that with sustainable green spaces can be a way to both reduce heat around the school and actually absorb more stormwater runoff too. So it has the added, added benefits of both addressing heat and addressing flooding as well. Yeah, that's a great point. Um, these 
measures to help schools adapt to climate change. I mean, they're they're expensive, and and it has to be noted that uh, many of the affected uh, the the areas that were affected uh, by the hurricane, especially here, Helene, uh, are in areas that are are politically conservative, where many, if not you know, most of the people don't actually believe in the climate science behind this. So how do you get them on board? Well, I think one thing that's critically important is to recognize that climate change is impacting children in all of these communities. And we need to start talking about it that way and taking away the politics of it and talking about the real impact on children and their families um, and recognize that this is the world that kids are leaving, living in. So in order to both keep kids safe now and prepare them for their future, we need to start taking these actions, advancing solutions in their school, and really critically important, teaching them um, about climate change to ensure they have the understanding, knowledge, and skills they need to be successful in a changing climate in the future. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so many people affected right now, and it's uh, only just going to get worse. Lauren Shifter, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Thank you.